The Laborer and the Snake A snake, having made his hole close to the porch of a cottage, inflicted a severe bite on the cottager's infant son, of which he died, to the great grief of his parents. The father resolved to kill the snake, and the next day, on its coming out of its hole for food, took up his axe, but making too much haste to hit him as he wriggled away, missed his head, and cut off only the end of his tail. After some time the cottager, afraid lest the snake should bite him also, endeavored to make peace, and placed some bread and salt in his hole. The snake said, There can henceforth be no peace between us, for whenever I see you I shall remember the loss of my tail, and whenever you see me you will be thinking of the death of your son. It is hard to forget injuries in the presence of him who caused the injury. THE BULL AND THE CALF A bull was striving with all his might to squeeze himself through a narrow passage which led to his stall. A young calf came up and offered to go before and show him the way by which he could manage to pass. "'Save yourself the trouble,' said the bull. "'I knew that way long before you were born.' "'Do not presume to teach your elders.' THE GOAT AND THE ASS A man once kept a goat and an ass. The goat, envying the ass on account of his greater abundance of food, said, How shamefully you are treated, at one time grinding in the mill, and at another carrying heavy burdens. And he further advised him that he should pretend to be epileptic, and fall into a deep ditch, and so obtain rest. The ass gave credence to his words, and, falling into a ditch, was very much bruised. His master, sending for a leech, asked his advice. He bade him pour upon the wounds the blood of a goat. They at once killed the goat, and so healed the ass. In injuring others we are apt to receive a greater injury. THE BOASTING TRAVELER a man who had traveled in foreign lands boasted very much on returning to his own country of the many wonderful and heroic things he had done in the different places he had visited. Among other things, he said that when he was at Rhodes he had leaped to such a distance that no man of his day could leap anywhere near him, and as to that there were in Rhodes many persons who saw him do it, and whom he could call as witnesses. One of the bystanders, interrupting him, said, Now, my good man, if this be all true, there is no need of witnesses. Suppose this to be Rhodes, and now for your leap. Cure a boaster by putting his words to the test. THE ASS, THE COCK, AND THE LION An ass and a cock were together, when a lion, desperate from hunger, approached. He was about to spring upon the ass, when the cock, to the sound of whose voice the lion, it is said, has a singular aversion, crowed loudly, and the lion fled away. The ass, observing his trepidation at the mere crowing of a cock, summoned courage to attack him, and galloped after him for that purpose. He had run no long distance, when the lion, turning about, seized him and tore him to pieces. False confidence often leads into danger. THE STAG AND THE FAWN A stag, grown old and mischievous, was, according to custom, stamping with his foot, making offers with his head, and bellowing so terribly that the whole herd quaked for fear of him, when one of the little fawns, coming up, addressed him thus, Pray, what is the reason that you, who are so formidable at all other times, if you do but hear the cry of the hounds, are ready to fly out of your skin for fear? What you observe is true, replied the stag, though I know not how to account for it. I am indeed vigorous and able, and often resolve that nothing shall ever dismay my courage. But, alas, I no sooner hear the voice of a hound, but my spirits fail me and I cannot help making off as fast as my legs can carry me. 
the greatest braggarts are the greatest cowards. THE PARTRIDGE AND THE FOWLER A fowler caught a partridge and was about to kill him. The partridge earnestly besought him to spare his life, saying, Pray, master, permit me to live, and I will entice many partridges to you in recompense for your mercy to me. The fowler replied, I shall now, with the less scruple, take your life, because you are willing to save it at the cost of betraying your friends and relations. And without more ado, he twisted his neck and put him in his bag with his other game. Those who would sacrifice their friends to save themselves from harm are not entitled to mercy. THE FARMER AND THE STARK A farmer placed his nets on his newly sown plough-lands, and caught a quantity of cranes which came to pick up his seed. With them he trapped a stork also. The stork, having his leg fractured by the net, earnestly besought the farmer to spare his life. Pray save me, master, he said, and let me go free this once. My broken limb should excite your pity. Besides, I am no crane, I am a stork, a bird of excellent character. And see how I love and slave for my father and mother. Look to it, my feathers. They are not the least like to those of a crane. The farmer laughed aloud and said, It may be all as you say. I only know this. I have taken you with these robbers, the cranes, and you must die in their company. Birds of a feather flock together. THE ASS AND HIS DRIVER An ass, being driven along the high road, suddenly started off and bolted to the brink of a deep precipice. When he was in the act of throwing himself over, his owner seized him by the tail, endeavoring to pull him back. The ass persisted in his effort. The man let him go and said, Conquer, but conquer to your cost. The perverse generally come to harm. THE HARE AND THE HOUND A hound, having started a hare from his form, after a long run gave up the chase. A goat-herd, seeing him stop, mocked him, saying, The little one is the best runner of the two. The hound replied, You do not see the difference between us. I was only running for a dinner, but he for his life. INCENTIVE SPURS EFFORT THE KITES AND THE SWANS The kites of old time had, equally with the swans, the privilege of song. But having heard the neigh of the horse, they were so enchanted with the sound that they tried to imitate it, and in trying to neigh they forgot how to sing. The desire for imaginary benefits often involves the loss of present blessings. THE DOG IN THE MANGER A dog lay in a manger, and by his growling and snapping prevented the oxen from eating the hay which had been placed for them. "'What a selfish dog!' said one of them to his companions. "'He cannot eat the hay himself, and yet he refuses to allow those to eat who can.' "'We should not deprive others of blessings, because we cannot enjoy them ourselves.' THE CROW AND THE SERPENT A crow, in great want of food, saw a serpent asleep in a sunny nook, and, flying down, greedily seized him. The serpent, turning about, bit the crow with a mortal wound. The crow, in the agony of death, exclaimed, O oh, unhappy me, who have found in that which I deemed a most happy windfall the source of my certain destruction! What seem to be blessings are not always so. THE CAT AND THE FOX As the cat and the fox were talking politics together, Reynard said, Let things turn out ever so bad. He did not care, for he had a thousand tricks for them yet before they should hurt him. But pray, says he, Mrs. Puss, suppose there should be an invasion. What course do you design to take? Nay, says the cat, I have but one shift for it, and if that won't do, I am undone. 
"'I am sorry for you,' replies Reynard, with all my heart, and would gladly help you, but indeed, neighbor, as times go, it is not good to trust. We must even be every one for himself, as the saying is. These words were scarcely out of his mouth, when they were alarmed with a pack of hounds that came upon them in full cry. The cat, by the help of her single shift, ran up a tree and sat securely among the top branches, from whence she beheld Reynard, who had not been able to get out of sight, overtaken with his thousand tricks, and torn in as many pieces by the dogs which had surrounded him. A little common sense is often of more value than much cunning. THE EAGLE AND THE ARROW An eagle sat on a lofty rock, watching the movements of a hare, whom he sought to make his prey. An archer, who saw him from a place of concealment, took an accurate aim and wounded him mortally. The eagle took one look at the arrow that had entered his heart, and saw in that single glance that its feathers had been furnished by himself. "'It is a double grief to me,' he exclaimed, "'that I should perish by an arrow feathered from my own wings.' The misfortunes arising from a man's own misconduct are the hardest to bear. THE DOG INVITED TO SUPPER A gentleman, having prepared a great feast, invited a friend to supper, and the gentleman's dog, meeting the friend's dog, Come, said he, my good fellow, and sup with us tonight. The dog was delighted with the invitation, and as he stood by and saw the preparations for the feast, said to himself, Capital fair indeed! This is in truth good luck. I shall revel in dainties, and I will take good care to lay in an ample stock to-night, for I may have nothing to eat to-morrow. As he said this to himself, he wagged his tail, and gave a sly look at his friend who had incited him. But his tail wagging to and fro caught the cook's eye, who, seeing a stranger, straightway seized him by the legs, and threw him out the window to the street below. When he reached the ground, he set off yelping down the street, upon which the neighbor's dogs ran up to him and asked him how he liked his supper. "'In faith,' said he, with a sorry smile, "'I hardly know, for we drank so deeply that I can't even tell you which way I got out.' Those who enter by the back stairs must not complain if they are thrown out by the window. THE FROGS ASKING FOR A KING The frogs, grieved at having no established ruler, sent ambassadors to Jupiter entreating for a king. He, perceiving their simplicity, cast down a huge log into the lake. The frogs, terrified at the splash occasioned by its fall, hid themselves in the depth of the pool, but no sooner did they see that the huge log continued motionless than they swam again to the top of the water, dismissed their fears, and came so to despise it as to climb up and to squat upon it. After some time they began to think themselves ill-treated in the appointment of so inert a ruler, and sent a second deputation to Jupiter to pray that he would set over them another sovereign. He then gave them an eel to govern them. When the frogs discovered his easy good nature, they yet a third time sent to Jupiter to beg that he would once more choose for them another king. Jupiter, displeased at their complaints, sent a heron, who preyed upon the frogs day by day, till there were none left to complain. When you seek to change your condition, be sure that you can better it. THE PROPHET A wizard, sitting in the marketplace, told the fortunes of the passers-by. A person ran up in great haste, and announced to him that the doors of his house had been broken open, and that all his goods were being stolen. He sighed heavily, and hastened away as fast as he could run. A neighbor saw him running, and said, "'Oh, you follow those? You say you can foretell the fortunes of others? How is it you did not foresee your own?' THE DOG AND HIS MASTER'S DINNER 
A dog had been taught to take his master's dinner to him every day. As he smelled the good things in the basket, he was sorely tempted to taste them, but he resisted the temptation and continued day after day to carry the basket faithfully. One day all the dogs in the neighborhood followed him with longing eyes and greedy jaws, and tried to steal the dinner from the basket. At first the faithful dog tried to run away from them, but they pressed him so close that at last he stopped to argue with them. This was what the thieves desired, and they soon ridiculed him to that extent that he said, Very well, I will divide with you. And he seized the best piece of chicken in the basket, and left the rest for the others to enjoy. He who stops to parley with temptation will be very likely to yield. THE BUFFOON AND THE COUNTRYMAN A rich nobleman once opened the theatre to the public without charge, and gave notice that he would handsomely reward any one who would produce a new amusement. A buffoon, well known for his jokes, said that he had a kind of entertainment that had never been produced in a theatre. This report being spread about created a great stir in the place and the theater was crowded to see the new entertainment. The buffoon appeared and imitated the squeaking of a little pig so admirably with his voice that the audience declared that he had a porker under his cloak and demanded that it should be shaken out. When that was done and yet nothing was found, they cheered the actor with the loudest applause. A countryman in the crowd proclaimed that he would do the same thing on the next day. On the morrow a still larger crowd assembled in the theatre. Both of the performers appeared on the stage. The buffoon grunted and squeaked and obtained as, on the preceding day, the applause and cheers of the spectators. Next the countryman commenced, and pretending that he concealed a little pig beneath his clothes, which in truth he did, contrived to lay hold of and to pull his ear, when he began to squeak. The crowd, however, cried out that the buffoon had given a far more exact imitation. On this the rustic produced the pig, and showed them the greatness of their mistake. Critics are not always to be depended upon. End of section 6